Welcome to Weld.com. We've been doing a series of exercises in a viewer response of how do I get going, how do I get started. Uh, you know, there's a lot of good advice out there and we do some TIG welding boot camps and we do these exact same uh, procedures and exercises to get people going and my whole deal with teaching and training is to build confidence. You still have to practice, you know, to get good. So. There's a responsibility thing on my part of it, and there's a responsibility thing on your part of it, and that's to practice, practice, practice. But we've been teaching and training, and we realize that through a series of exercises, we can build this confidence, get your skills, it's the straight lines, manipulating and controlling the, the, the angle, the arc length. There's just a, a number of things that you can do with simple, simple materials. And so we've done like the fillet welds, multiple pass, where we've done edge welds on all these materials, uh, lap welds, corner welds, outside corner welds, with one with no gap, one with gap, and we're a couple of different ways to manipulate the filler wire, and the, the camera girl said she wanted to see a, a butt weld, but it, she said she wanted to do one, and then it dawned on me, I'm the one that's doing it, she's just gonna film it, so anyway, we're, we beveled up a couple of eighth inch by two inch wide by six inch long strips and when I say bevel I've, I've just taken a, a, a grinder I've taken a, a Walter grinder and a quarter inch wheel and I set this thing down on it just to clean the mill scale off and we're talking seconds to get that done and and then I took the and laid it up where I just kind of raked a bevel on it and the bevel is like half the thickness and now I'm gapping this open like 1 16th all the way down through here. And I just want to tack this corner down here without moving anything. This will probably move after the first tack. I'll bring it back in here where it's consistent and then I want to tack that. So with the gap, I just want to make the weld and show how manipulating the filler wire and doing this correctly and dripping that in there that we can get some control over the weld pool and get some consistent results. Let me find my hood and my safety glasses, be right back. Okay, I've tacked a couple of plates up here. I've got a couple of dummy plates over here that you know, I'm sure you saw when I first tacked up. These are real rusty. Probably wasn't making a good contact in here, but I put an arc over here on this plate and it was jumping over here to this side till it right about the time I got the pool, I put a piece of filler wire in there and they just all slammed together and that's fine. It didn't happen that way down here, but in any event, we're tacked and we have a little bit of gap. We're clean back here on the back side, no mill scale. Uh, it doesn't take much. We're only about 3 sixteenths away from either side. We're beveled halfway through the material and we just want to experiment with running a two pass weld. So I'm gonna turn these slightly like this so that I can get the angle that I need. We have a camera over here zoomed in so we should be good. I'm learning how to do this first time. This is not something I normally do. Normally when we go to bevel plate, we go to at least a quarter of an inch and beyond three eighths. And from there we go into pipe welding. So I honestly can't remember doing one of these this thin. Again, we're in the flat position. We can do all these in variations of vertical up. We can practice the horizontal get used to these and all I just trying to I'm trying to show some simple concepts to answer viewer questions about how do I get started what do I practice on all right here we go wow these plates moved immediately 
and slam shut. I have lost all gap in the first half of this. I have lost all gap in the entire joint. I welded this really hot. It's wide. It's got a V down through the middle of it. I think I need to put heftier tacks on here. I'm going to try something here. I'm going to continue on. backed off the amperage a long way and continued with the last inch and a half of that <clears throat> it looks a little better I didn't make quite as wide I didn't realize I was making that wide of a weld to begin with this may be an exercise in what not to practice here let's take a look yeah we don't want to practice that it's sunk in and wide it's actually too big of a weld fused all the way so we need to get off our heat some. Again, I, you know, I don't do this joint so very often at all. I think it's been like 30 years since I even attempted something like this. We go on into heavier plate with more of a bevel. We put either feathered edge, 1 16th, sometimes 332 of a root face, and we're using quite a bit of gap. So let me prepare some more stock here because this is not correct. I don't want to the middle of it looks okay on this side. The end of it doesn't even look that good. Where I back the heat off, it actually looks worse than when I cooked it. So this is one of those don't weld too hot type things. Be right back, gonna get some more material. Man, I'm a, I'm a noob. This is the second attempt. I haven't done this in like forever. And a lot of times I've done them on, it's been thinner than this and in a back purge like a stainless thing or whatever I can show you some samples of aircraft tests that people have taken around here so it's not normal yeah you know, I'm just out of practice you know and I just I made it I cooked this one over here my gap slammed shut so to prep this one I did the same thing I increased the bevel a little bit tacked them up on the back side and used a substantial tack when I start welding these I'm not going to weld I'm not going to start on the tack so We'll try to maintain our root opening here of, of a 16th. So let me see if I can get this right the second time around. For all of you that thought that I welded perfect all the time, I'm sorry. That hardly ever happens. I'll, I'll fess up to my mistakes all the time. Here we go. I maintained a root opening, and this is what I wanted here, is for this to be kind of shallow. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to get into these edges here. I am, accidentally, but 
I've left them alone to the point where I can go back in and put another pass over the top of it. Now, I still have my original root opening that I started with, what I wanted, and let us hope that I got some good stuff on the back side, and I did. We're melted good. It's a little caved in, but we're penetrated. So I'm gonna continue on and add more wire, push that in there just a little bit more and increase my amperage and see if we can't get a little better melt through. Again, we created the groove. You know, we're teaching ourselves to, I'm actually teaching me, I haven't done this in forever. Get that proper penetration and leave this alone where you can do a cover pass. So I'm gonna adjust amperage higher and push more wire in it. I still don't think that I got that in there. Just something about it didn't feel right. Like I'm getting it in there on the back side. Sucked it back pretty bad the first time. Better, we have do, we, uh, we have me melted it through on the back side. It's flush, it's flush. The first part of it is what we call suck back. The edges are broken down, but that's not what we want. We have no reinforcement. Actually, I think this would weld better with more gap just a little bit more gap so that we could create, get the fall through, push more wire into it. Now, we have left ourselves with a nice groove that we can come back and put a second pass in. So let's do that. Okay, so, you know, again, another little training exercise. I'm not gonna get real critical about this. I don't particularly care the way this is, a little flat, but again, it allows me to practice into a thin groove. So these exercises are meant to control arc length, filler wire, manipulate the tungsten in the right arc length and get some flow. This is one that I'm kind of challenged with. I need to go back and teach myself how all over again. Uh, we'll keep doing this. I think we're low on batteries. I was gonna show you a couple of sample clips from some aircraft tests, but we can do that another time. I hope this helps. If we can answer any questions and, and get you started on what to practice, how to practice, uh, write us and, and we'll try to answer your questions. Thanks for watching the videos. Please subscribe.